Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our service this Sunday morning. Can everyone hear me okay? No? Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay, brilliant. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our service this Sunday. Uh, my name's Sabrina, and I will be leading you this morning for the service. Uh, so I'm going to open us up in prayer, and then we will, I'll give you some notices. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to see another day, Lord, as we know that it's in your will, Lord, not in ours. We know, Lord, that we are making plans, Lord, but it's yours that prevail, Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus, that as we have entered your home this morning, Lord, that you will empty our hearts, Lord Jesus. Open our ears, Lord, that they will hear what you have for us this morning. I pray, Lord, that anyone that has come here seeking you, Lord, that they will truly find you this morning, Lord. We leave the service in your hands, Lord, and we pray, Lord, that you work through us and that we are blessed and you get all the praise and honor. In your precious name, amen. So I will start off with some notices. But before I do that, I just want to um, point you in the direction of our beautiful display this morning. And it's on behalf of Dolly Hassan. And I'd like to thank Christine Rule for putting this beautiful display together. And I hope you can see the beauty of it at home as well, wherever you are watching. So if we just give a round of applause for that this morning. Uh, this Friday, the 24th of February, Top Squad and Bright Sparks will be back. So any children of uh, reception age all the way through to year seven are welcome. So this Friday, the 24th at 6.30, here in the church, there will be activities for the children, a fun way of fellowship and interacting and learning about God. Um, I actually used to volunteer at Top Squad and it is a lot of fun. So if you have any children or grandchildren that are, have lots of energy to burn on a Friday evening, bring them down to the church, they'll have a great time. Uh, another notice for you, uh, next Saturday we have the Muslim book table. Um, that will be at 10.30 outside of the church. If you have any questions or anything else that you'd like to find out, please see Pastor William uh, at the end of the service and he will fill you in. Uh, this after the service today, um, if you've been with us over the last few weeks, you would have heard that there will be a members vote uh, for the Turkish church hiring of, the, of our building. So just to say, after the service, uh, I'll make another announcement and Pastor William will come up and lead us in that, in that vote and remind us of what we are voting for. Um, and in addition to that, we have been sent some character references from the, the ETCN, which is the European Turkish Church Network. And it's from people who have worked with uh, this community in the past. So if you would like to have a, a read of this, uh, Gifty and George will point you in the direction in the foyer. So that's just some extra information for you as well. Please, can I ask everyone to keep in prayer those who have recently had surgery and who are recovering um, and who may have surgery in the next few weeks as well. There are lots, going, lots of things going on, but we are grateful for things like the NHS and, and our fellowship that we can look out and pray for one another. So please keep those in prayer. Okay. So I'm going to get, lead us in our call to worship and we will then hand over to our I'll be quiet for today. So our call to worship this morning is from 1 Samuel chapter 12, verses 14 to 15. And it reads, All will go well with you if you honour the Lord your God, serve him, listen to him, and obey his commands. And if you and your king follow him, but if you do not listen to the Lord, but disobey his commands, he will be against you and your king. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you again, Lord, for your word. We pray, Lord, as we enter this time of worship, Lord, that you will be with us, Lord, you will meet us at our point of need, Lord, and that you will get all of the glory and honor. In your precious name, amen. So I'm going to hand over to Yemi and Emanuela to lead us this morning. days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant David rebuilding the temple of praise. Oh, these are the days of the harvest, the fields are as wide in your and we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. There's no God like Jehovah, 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 there's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah, there's no God like Jehovah, there's no God like Jehovah, there's no God like Jehovah. Oh, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, 
up your hands, church, and just move side to side. Lord, I, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show. Open the eyes of my 
thank you for leading us in worship, ladies. Um, I would just like to take this moment for, to ask you to just turn around and welcome someone here this morning. Uh, maybe it's someone you haven't seen for a while, or just say hello and tell them that they are blessed. It's always nice seeing the smile on everyone's faces when someone acknowledges them and says good morning. So I hope we can continue to do that as a family and get to know one another. We have so many similarities and things that we all care about so deeply. Uh, But now it's time for our birthday box. So if anyone has had a birthday in the last week or an upcoming birthday this week, please come up now. We would like to give you a little gift and pray for you. Don't be shy. Oh, here we go. Thank you. (laughs) Give a round of applause as Paul comes up. Hello, good morning. Oh, is this mic on? Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. And would you like to tell us your name and when your birthday is? Well, I'm Claudius and my birthday was yesterday. I'm great old man of 76. (laughs) I'm a great old goat at 76. (laughs) (laughs) Amazing. Would you like to pick something for your birthday? (laughs) Excellent. Paul has picked a ruler because it's good for his paperwork. So see, 76 and still going, keeping busy. So let's pray for you, Claude, as you celebrated. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, Claudius, Lord. We thank you for you keeping him, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the testimony that he has, Lord, of your goodness and your love, Lord. We pray, Lord, for the many years that he has left on this earth, Lord, that he will be a servant to you and continue to to love and do your will, Lord Jesus. We ask for your blessing and protection over him and his family over the next coming years of his life, Lord. We pray these things in your precious name. Amen. It is now time for our children and young people to leave for their various groups. Uh, So if you are here for the first time, um, the children will leave through these doors here and go to their groups, and upper discoverers will go uh, through the, the back. Uh, I'll just say a little a prayer for the, the children as they're in their sessions uh, this morning. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the children, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that uh, for their families who have brought them to church, Lord, so that they can learn about you, Lord, and that they will have a foundation and, and have a way to go, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord, for all that they learn today, Lord, that it will be engraved with them, Lord, that whatever they face, they will remember, will remember your teachings, Lord, and your word, and what they believe because of you, Lord. Um, We pray these things in your name. Amen. We are now going to take up our offering, um, and we'll be led in a song. to sing your song again. 
Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my Stand with me if you will. just want to thank you this morning for this privilege that you enable us this morning that we can gather together in your presence. We thank you this morning for all good gifts around us come from heaven above. We thank you this morning that we can bring back a portion of what you gave unto us so it can be used to extend the kingdom of God throughout the world we pray in Jesus mighty name. Amen. We are now going to have our prayers of intercession led by uh, St. John. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence with thanksgiving in our hearts. We enter your courts with our praises singing this is the very day that we know within our hearts that you have made and despite the challenges we face we rejoice by faith that you have made us glad we lift up thanks father of god unto you no matter the challenges and the difficulties we face we do this, Father of God, by faith before your presence. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. For this is more than gold that you have bestowed upon us. What is money without life? What is gold without life? Therefore, we raise our voices of praise and honor unto your name. For what you have bestowed upon us. And you've even done more by putting food on our table. Father, shoes on our feet. Shelter for us, Father of God, to dwell under. 
you have been gracious and merciful unto us. For the multitude of sins we've done, our actions, deeds, and words which have not pleased you. When we come before your presence and we confess, Father of God, you are faithful and just and you forgive us. So we are grateful to you, Father of God, for what you have done for us and continue to do. Despite our shortcomings and our weaknesses, we thank you for our children, Father of God, our friends and loved ones, our family members. For Father of God, down the line they may have sinned, Father of God, by action, deeds, and words. And we can, Father, ask no forgiveness of sin. Father, your word says if we confess our sins, you are faithful. You are just to forgive us and cleanse us from every unrighteousness. So, Father of God, we can't bear before you. We cannot hide our sins from you. And therefore, we lay before your presence, asking that the blood of Christ will cleanse us from every unrighteousness. Every unrighteous word we've spoken, every unrighteous action, Father of God, we've expected. We pray and ask for your mercy. Father, cleanse us, we pray thee. Purify us, Father of God, that in your presence today, we, Father of God, by faith, will be purified and will hear your word. And Father of God, move in the direction of righteousness. We bring the world before you. Father, we've seen Syria and Turkey. And Father, even at the heart, is broken by what we see. We thank you for the miracles which continue to happen. Father, we thank you for the lives which are continuing, Father God, to be saved. And we pray right now in the name of Jesus that any life beneath that rubble, Father God, which is not quenched, the Father of God, you will direct those who are working, Father of God. The more miracles, Father of God, will be to your glory and to your name. And we pray for those who are bereaved, who are mourning, Father of God, and they do not know how to control themselves because they've lost a whole family, loved ones. We ask for your mercy and your comfort on their behalf. Those who are injured, we pray for your healing, Father of God. We pray that the enemy will not use this time, Father of God, to bring them down and cause people to lose hope in life and say, what is the meaning of life? But we pray that your spirit, Father of God, will move in them and you revive their soul, encourage them, Father of God, that they will hope in you and you alone and that many lives will be changed by the miracles, Father of God, we see around us. We give you blessings and praise, Father God, for your goodness and mercy. We look at the rest of the world, Father God. It seems everything is chaotic, but we know you are in control. So we bring the world into your hands, that your will will be done in this world. Ukraine and Russia, Father God, the fight over there. We pray that your will will be done, that justice will prevail. The Father of God, only you will reign supreme in all things. And in as much as Father of God, many Father of God will have their own ideas. We know your will alone will stand and we pray for it to stand. We come before you, Father of God, as a church. Many of us, Father of God, are facing difficulties in our lives. Problems with our health, challenges at work, financial situations, Father of God, which we cannot bear. Or prizes, Father of God, we are crying our high. And some, Father of God, do not know what to do. But we know the God we can call on. Who never disappoints us, Father of God. Who provides our needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus that even in this situation, we can come to you and cry, our Father. And we know you will hear our voice and answer our prayer. We bring our challenges before you. Today, we leave it before your altar, Father of God. And say, Father of God, heal us and meet us at our point of need. 
and glorify your name. That we'll have a testimony to share with others and say, through it all, we learn to trust in Jesus and Jesus came true for us. So heal the sick, we pray thee. Meet those, Father God, who are financially burdened, Father God. Those who have other challenges away, Father God, in the home. Family, Father God, broken apart. We pray for your healing, Father God. Glorify your name in our lives. Let it not be church as normal. Let it be you, Father. Let it be you in our life. Let us taste of you. Let us feel of you, Father God. Let us have the impact that comes from you. With your Holy Spirit, Father God, within us. We give you glory and praise and honor. We bring our leaders, Father of God, before you and your family and ask for your answer of protection to keep them safe from all dangers seen and unseen, to direct them, Father of God, the way you've called them, Father of God, to go. Lead them, we pray thee, that we will also hear of thee through them and glorify your name. We commit the week ahead of us, Father of God, into your hands. And we pray that each and every individual here, Father of God, will taste of the week, Father of God, and give glory, Father, praise and honor unto your name. Go ahead of us, clear our paths of all impediment, all works of the enemy, Father of God, which has been laid ahead. Accidents, whatever. We bind them and cast them off our path in Jesus' name. We pray that, Father of God, your angels will lead us, Father of God, and take us through. That at the end of the week, we'll come back and raise praise, honor, and glory unto your name. We pray for the word which is about to come. The Father of God, your word will penetrate our hearts. Touch our hearts and give us hearts of flesh. That the word will go in. And Father of God, will be doers of the word. No hearers alone deceiving ourselves. We give you glory. Unto you be the praise. And unto you be all honor. And the saints of God shall say, Amen. It's now time for our Bible reading, uh, and it will be given to us by Auntie Daphne. I couldn't just say her first name because she's my auntie, so Auntie Daphne is going to come up and give us our Bible reading this morning. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, church. The reading is taken from John 8. Chapter 8, 31 to 47. So Jesus said to those who believed in him, If you obey my teaching, you are really my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We are the descendants of Abraham, they answered, and we have never been anybody's slaves. What do you mean then by saying you will be free? Jesus said to them, I'm telling you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. A slave does not belong to a family permanently, but a son belongs there forever. If the son sets you free, then you will be really free. I know you're Abraham's descendants, yet, you, yet you're trying to kill me because you will not accept my teaching. I talk about what my father has shown me, but you do what your father has told you. They answered him, our father is Abraham. If you really were Abraham's children, Jesus replied, you would do the same things that he did. All I have ever done is to tell you the truth I heard from, tell you the truth I heard from God. Yet you are trying to kill me. Abraham did nothing like that. You are doing what your father did. God himself is the only father we have, they answered, and we are his true children. Jesus said to them, if God really were your father, you would love me because I came from God and now I'm here. I did not come on my, on my own authority, but he sent me. 
Why do, you not, why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to listen to my message. You are the children of your father, the devil, and you want to follow your father's desires. From the very beginning, he was a murderer and has never been on the side of truth because there is no truth in him. When he tells you a lie, he's only doing what is natural to him because he's a liar and the father of all lies. But I tell you the truth, and that is why you do not believe me. Which one of you can prove that I'm guilty of sin? If I tell you the truth, then why do you not believe me? He who comes from God listens to God's words. You, however, are not from God, and that is why you will not listen. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will now prepare to hear uh, the sermon given to us by Isaac. Um, so I'm just going to pray as he makes his way up. Heavenly Father, we thank you um, for your servant Isaac, Lord. We pray, Lord, that as he comes to, to share your word, Lord, that you will be with him, Lord. You will speak through him, Lord Jesus, and allow us to hear exactly what you want us to hear today, Lord, and, and soften our hearts to anything that it needs to be, Lord. Uh, I pray, Lord, that you uh, are with your servant as he speaks, um, and we pray these things in your name. Amen. Morning, church. How are you all doing? Good, 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 good. Okay, so I'm preaching this week, and I obviously, because I'm here, isn't it? Um, so it's obviously I'm preaching. So um, I was thinking about the sermon, what to preach on, and I was inspired to preach on this very topic. Um, can I have a projector, please? So the title of today's sermon is How to Make Satan Happy. Yeah? <laughs> okay, you see, so... Okay, I'm going to make a statement there yeah, and just cheer based on if you agree or not, yeah? How to make God happy, yeah? Okay, how to make Satan happy? Boo, okay, see, so it's obvious that as children of God, as followers of Jesus, that you do not desire to make Satan happy. That's not your desire. You don't wake up in the morning and think, hmm, how might I please the devil? That's not what any of you are doing. And if that is what you are doing, I have a different sermon called the gospel, which you need to hear and come and see me after that. So it's clear that none of you want to make Satan happy, right? But I think it's fair to say that during the course of your life, during the course of your Christian walk, there have been times when you have made Satan happy. Even though that was in your goal, you may have done things which Satan was pleased with even though that wasn't your intention, even though that wasn't what you were trying to do. And so that's why I think it's important today to look at some of the ways in which we might be making Satan happy, unknowingly. And if we are, then we would stop, isn't it? Because by the booze, I'm guessing none of you want to make Satan happy, right? No, you don't, do you? Actually, let me not assume. Hands up if you would like to make Satan happy. Okay, just for those at home, no, nobody's hands went up. All right, okay, so, so you see the passage that we're looking at. Um, the click is not working, so if you could go there for me. So the passage that we were looking at in John, it says that Jesus was talking to those who believed. Yeah, so, and then it sort of said, to the Jews who believed, he said to them, you know, if you hold to my teaching, you're my disciples, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now, we all accept that, and we all know that as followers of Jesus, we have been set free, that he died to set us free. But they answered him, oh, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves. How can you say that we shall be set free? So they claim to follow Jesus and don't know that they need to be set free from sin. And even another lie, they said, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves. Egypt, Pharaoh, did that happen? So they're not even fully 
upon their history. Because slaverily speaking, you have been slaves. And spiritually speaking, you are slaves. Yeah, now, I, I laid that down as a platform to show that as believers, or as people who claim to follow Jesus, it is possible to be misinformed. It is possible to be doing something which we believe is good, and it's not. As Paul says, Paul, when Paul was persecuting the church, he believed he was doing the will of God. So Paul wasn't thinking, I hate God. He believed he was doing the will of God. And he was doing it fervently until Jesus stepped in and says, why are you persecuting me? It's possible to unintentionally please Satan, to make the devil happy. Yeah? So I want to look at four possible ways in which we may be doing this. Yeah? Or which we may have done it in the past and make sure we don't do it again. Yeah? So, so the first way is having an unmovable commitment to safety and comfort. Yeah? So when, as far as we're concerned, our safety and our comfort are the top priorities in life. And nothing or anyone will get in the way of that. We will do any and everything as long as it does not compromise our safety or our comfort. So we see here in Matthew 16, so it says, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the chief priest and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. And so Peter took him to the side and began to rebuke him, because why not? Never, Lord, he said, that shall never happen to you. And then Jesus says to him, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. And we see here Jesus equates prioritizing human concerns over the concerns of God akin to Satan. Because clearly, Peter isn't thinking, I hate Jesus and I want to get in his way. He is concerned about the safety and the comfort of his friend. He cares. And there is nothing wrong with being concerned about the safety and comfort of our loved ones and ourselves. There is nothing wrong with that. If you weren't concerned about your safety and comfort, you probably are not the most aware person of life and reality. But the problem comes when we place our safety and comfort over the will of God. Here, Jesus tells Peter, this has to happen. <laughs> I will be doing the will of God. And Peter sees, wait, it involves suffering and killing. And Peter is so taken aback by the suffering and killing part that he misses, but on the third day I'll be raised to life. Sometimes we are so committed to comfort, we are so committed to not suffering that we only see the danger and don't see the blessing within that. We only see the risk and don't see the blessing of obedience that will come with us taking the act of faith. And when we prioritize our own safety and comfort over the will of God, we are making Satan extremely happy. And the reason why we can justify it, because, you know, that thing is dangerous. Who wants to suffer? That's not wise. There are so many clever ways in which we can use safety and comfort to disobey God and not feel bad about it. To disobey God and call it wisdom. To disobey God and call it an act of love. And there is nothing wrong with desiring comfort. But we must never place our comfort, our safety, above the will of God. And when we're doing that, we make Satan happy. Another way we might make Satan happy is when we, when we misunderstand God's word. Yeah? So, in Genesis, now you all know the story of um, Satan um, tempting Adam and Eve. Now, let's look at it. So it says, Now the serpent was more crafty than the other wild animals the Lord had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from the tree in the garden? Now, this was her response. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, 
you must not touch it or you will die. Now, is that what God said? Let's see what God said. So, and then the serpent said, the serpent said you know, you will not die. But now let's see what God says. Earlier, the Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord commanded the man, you are to eat, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And when you eat from it, you will die. Where is the part in there about touching it? God never said you can't touch it. He said, can't eat from it. He never said you can't touch it. Now, Eve clearly has misunderstood this and thinks the command isn't just don't eat it, but also to touch it, right? So when Satan says to her, that's not true, you won't die, yeah? So if Eve believes touching the tree will bring death, as God has says, and she touches the fruit and doesn't die, what does she now believe about what God has said? That is not true. That is not true. And do you think Satan was happy about that? Of course he was. Satan is extremely pleased when we misunderstand God's word. Because when we misunderstand God's word, we will misapply God's word. And when we ignorantly misapply God's word, we will think we are doing nothing wrong. And we will feel strong in our disobedience. Because as far as we're concerned, we are doing what God said. Also, when we misunderstand God's word and we disobey our misunderstanding, not what God instructed, we're not properly testing the word of God. We're testing our misunderstanding, which will lead to more misunderstandings about God, his character. Because God said, don't touch it, you will die. I'm touching it and I'm not dying. When we misunderstand God's word, we make Satan extremely happy. And you will see, in the, in the gospel of Matthew, when Satan tempted Jesus, Jesus only hit back with, let me get there. So Jesus only hit back with, it is written. It is written. It is written. He didn't hit back with, in my opinion. Too often, Christians go to, in my opinion, over, it is written. There are issues on which the Bible is silent. So if the discussion is, shall we extend the roof of the church? Yes, you pray about it and you give your opinion, right? If the instruction is, shall we share the gospel? It is not your opinion, it is written. The sinless son of God came against Satan and did not give his opinion. He gave the word of God. How can sinful fallen me come against Satan with my opinion? We make Satan extremely happy when we misunderstand God's word. Now, the next one. We also make Satan happy when we fail to forgive and restore fallen brothers and sisters. Now, so this is the passage in um, 2 Corinthians. Now, here's a bit of the context of what happened. So, in 1 Corinthians, Paul wrote to the church in Corinth about an issue that was going on. And the issue was that there was a man who had taken his father's wife. Now, I'm, I'm guessing, I'm hoping that he hadn't taken his mother <laughs> that his father had married someone else, but who knows. But he had taken his father's wife, right? And everybody in the church was kind of ignoring it. So Paul wrote to them and said, what are you guys doing? Deal with that sin. Discipline him. Discipline him. In order that he might repent, yeah? And that is always the purpose of God's discipline, is to bring us repentance. It's never to cause our destruction, it's never to make us broken and torn down and destroyed. Whenever God disciplines us, it's to correct us and bring us on the right path. Whenever God disciplines us, it's because we have strayed away and he wants to bring us back onto the right path. 
this brother had strayed away and rather than the body of Christ bringing him onto the right path, they were ignoring the sin. So Paul said, nope, deal with it. So they dealt with it. They disciplined him, kicked him out of the church. But then he repented. And after he had repented, nothing had happened. So Paul has to write to them again and says, the punishment inflicted on him by the majority is sufficient. Now instead, you ought to forgive and comfort him so that he will not be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. I urge you therefore to reaffirm your love for him. And what I have forgiven, if there is anything to forgive, I have forgiven in Christ for your sake in order that Satan might not outwit us. For we are not unaware of his schemes. You started well. There was sin identified, dealt with. Now there's been repentance. There must be restoration. They hadn't completed the journey. They had only started it. And Paul has to write to them. Because if you leave this brother on his own, in his sorrow, he is vulnerable to Satan. He's the lost sheep away from the flock, out in the wilderness, where ravenous wolves can get to him where he will be crushed by sorrow. And him being part of the body of Christ, Paul says, no, 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 go and get him. He's repented. Bring him back in, comfort and restore him because the purpose of the discipline was restoration. So you must complete it. When brothers and sisters, when we fall, we must be disciplined. When we repent, we must be restored. And when we don't do that, when we leave that person out in the wilderness, Satan is extremely glad. And finally, the thing that I think makes Satan the most happiest, that makes him do the Michael Jackson Billie Jean dance, is when we give up on our relationship with God. So you see here in Job, when um, after, uh, you know, afflicting Job, Satan then, you know, says, this is the conversation between Satan and the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And he still maintains his integrity, though you incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. Satan says, skin for skin. A man will give all he has for his own life, but now stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones, and he will curse you to your face. Satan is extremely happy and pleased when we allow the difficulties and trials of life to cause us to give up on our relationship with the Lord. When you walk away, when you think one trial two trials, three trials, 10 trials, 100 trials. This is too much, forget it. Satan is pleased. He is happy that you are walking away from the most important thing in the universe. That you are walking away from the most important thing you have. And it's really interesting because sometimes our willingness to walk away from our relationship with God as a result of suffering is evidence of how much we valued God in the first place. Because in all my years of living, I have never encountered anyone, now bear this in mind, I've encountered many people who have walked away from the Lord because of suffering, because things didn't go their way. I have never, not once, encountered anyone who says, because of all the suffering I'm going through, because of all the consecutive pain, strife I am going through, I am going to give up on money. No one, nobody ever allows suffering, hardship, death of family members, trials, tribulations, sickness to cause them to give up on money. Because no matter what happens to them, they believe that money is still valuable. They believe that money is still vital to their success and happiness. And so if trials and tribulations is now 
tempting you to walk away from God, what did you believe about God in the first place? And why are you not giving up on money? Satan is deeply pleased. Satan is overjoyed if you allow the sufferings, the difficulties, the trials that you are facing, if you allow them to take you away from the Lord. And if you do allow it to take you away from the Lord, then as far as Satan is concerned, mission accomplished. And we are not here to help Satan accomplish his mission. We are here to help the Lord accomplish his mission. So as believers, it is our goal and our desire to please the Lord. And we do not desire under any circumstances to make Satan happy. And because that is the case, always remember to put obedience over safety and comfort. Remember to get a good understanding of God's word so that you can have a good application of God's word. Forgive and restore those who have fallen so that Satan will not outwit us. That he will not get that abandoned Christian left on their own and destroy them. We bring them in because we are stronger together than what we're divided. And then, because we do not want to make Satan happy, because it's our desire to please the Lord, we do not give up on our relationship with God under any circumstances. We are more committed to God than the unbeliever is committed to money because he is our treasure. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your goodness. Thank you for your grace, for your love, and your compassion. We thank you, Father, Lord God, that you are faithful from beginning to end, and that you are always with us, Lord God, and that in the midst of all our shortcomings, Lord, you are faithful, you are forgiving, and you are caring, Lord God. And so, Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone here, Lord, and commit them into your hands, Lord. I pray for all the believers all over the world, Lord, and commit them into your hands, Lord God. And I pray, Lord, that you would give us the wisdom, the grace, and the understanding, Lord God, to cling onto your word, to walk in your word, to walk in the light, to walk in wisdom, seeking to do nothing but to please you. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Now, with, with every head bowed, with every eyes closed, if the trials of life has, you know, got you to a point where you're, you're tired, you're thinking, this is too much, just put your hands up and I'll pray. I'll pray for you. If you're thinking, like, this is, this is a lot. Thank you. Lord, I commit those who have put their hands up into your hands, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you will fill their hearts with faith. I pray, Father, Lord God, that you would take control of everything concerning them, Father, Lord God, and that you will let your will be done, Lord God. I pray that in the midst of the trials, they will feel your presence and have full and complete assurance that you are with them and that they will not be consumed. And as they go throughout from church today, as they go throughout this week, this month, the rest of this year and the years to come, that their life, Lord God, will be a testimony of your faithfulness that others can look to and see that the Lord is good. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Isaac, for sharing the word. Um, I just pray that we can all reflect on, on the words that Isaac shared with us this morning uh, and also be reminded of how loving God is, even through things, if we can identify with some of those points. He's so gracious and loves us and allows us to come back to him um, and still be welcomed in his kingdom. Uh, so we're going to have our final song.
Um, so I'll hand over to the ladies. Can we all please stand? And the last one we're going to sing this morning is Christ is Enough.
thank you, Lord, that you are enough, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you are enough, Lord. Anything that we are faced with, Lord, we know that you have us covered, Lord. You know what's best for us, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord, that as we commit our lives into your hands, Lord, that you will continue to walk with us and bless us, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord, that this week we will be committed, Lord, to understand your word more, Lord Jesus. Forgive and restore, Lord Jesus. Uh, not stick to our comforts, Lord Jesus, and not give up on you, Lord, because you are not a man who will lie, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness, Lord, and I pray, Lord, that you will just continue to watch over us, Lord. Uh, Lord, I pray, Lord, that the Lord will bless and keep your children, Lord. Lord, make your face to shine upon your children and be gracious to them, Lord. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Please take your seats. Just to...